I'm so excited that you guys joined me today. Thank you so much. I know that uh, we've been away for a couple of weeks and I have been out of the country and then we had three funerals and a wedding. So it's been super busy on my end and I am so happy to be back here with you guys again today. Um, I have today a very special guest and she specializes in digital photos. And we get this question a lot in our Facebook group where there are people that have pictures that they themselves have taken. And this is back in the days when we sent the film in in the mail and then the mail came back and we opened up the pictures and we got a discount if we bought a duplicate copy. So we saved all of our pictures and then we saved the duplicate copy, even if they were bad. And if you're like me, you save photos that you didn't really need or want, but you save them because you paid for them. <laughs> and so then we find ourselves with all these extra photos and what on earth do you do? Then you've got parents, uh, parent photos that you've inherited and you got pictures from your grandparents that you've inherited. And come on, guys, how are we supposed to deal with these photos? So with me today, I've got a very special guest who specializes in photos. This is photo recovery and salvation of our photos. And I'm super excited excited that she's going to have this conversation with us today because I've got a lot of questions and I know you do too. So go ahead and throw your questions in the comments because I want to make sure that we get all of those answered. And I want to say, hey, Patty, how are you today? I'm so glad that you've joined us. And please help me welcome Chris Ladon. Hey, Chris, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Oh, thank you for letting me share your space because we're talking about one of my love languages. <laughs> pictures. <laughs> well, and I think a lot of people's love language are pictures, but then mm -hmm. we get to a point where that love language, it's kind of like the honeymoon phase is over and you're like, oh my goodness, now what do we do with all the photos, right? Yeah. Yeah. That happens. Um, and, and sometimes I've heard myself say to dear, dear ones, you know, you may have a lot of photos, but just think of them as reminders of your blessings. Mm -hmm. you have, the more photos you have, maybe the more blessings you have in your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, they might need a little care, like a pet <laughs> or a garden. <laughs> so tell me, because this is a question that keeps coming up over and over again, tell me a little bit about your past, because I know that you almost lost your photos in a fire. And lo and behold, that kind of sparked an interest that you decided you were going to make a difference in how people preserve their photos so that they didn't lose their photos. How, tell me about that and how that all got started. Well, there's nothing like a crisis to really make you figure out what matters most um, without trying to be too dramatic or take you through too much pain because I did not lose my home. The simple threat was real. I was pregnant with my second child. My husband was out shopping. It was a Sunday night. I just hopped out of the shower, wet hair and a nightshirt. And um, I'm checking my email and the baby's in bed. And I literally smelled smoke before the smoke detectors went off. So I grabbed the cats. I threw them in a suitcase, literally. <laughs> grabbed the baby out of bed, walked out with my cell phone and dialed 911. And the, all the drama you could imagine over living literally two blocks from the fire department. And half of my friends are, you know, volunteer fire department heroes and um, smoke everywhere, everywhere. And all I wanted to do was hand off my baby and my pets and run back inside and rescue my pictures. So that right there, I was very fortunate that the, fire, the flames in my garage were put out immediately. I did the right thing. I did what they trained the kindergartners and preschoolers to do. I got out. Um, my hands are sweating. <laughs> but it wasn't until, honestly, a, a few weeks later, when the PTSD started to settle down a little bit and the home no, matter, no longer smelled like smoke, that I realized I needed to do something. I needed my photos to be replaceable. Enter the subject digital photography. Um, when my wedding album was on the shelf, the baby books were on the shelf, my heritage photos were in boxes and on shelves and albums, and I could not get them out. It became, that's where the seed was planted for my mission to make sure that when we have uh, the unknown happen, that our most special memories are protected and replaceable. So that's the nutshell version of it. Um, my business name is Reminiscence because I like to make reminiscing easy. And sometimes that means we need to bring non-digital things into the digital era, but also diffuse any of the fears that go along with digital. Did I answer your question? 
Yeah, you did. And I'm super glad that you brought it up because I think there is a really big fear about me losing the photos and then a nagging thing. I know it is for me a nagging thing like, oh, I've got literally boxes of photos. Yeah. How how do I fix them? How do I keep them? How do I preserve them? What is the next step? Because I know this about myself. I'm never going to sit down and do like scrapbooking and stuff like that. I just don't have time, but I want to save the photos. And there was a window of my life where I was like, oh yes, I'm going to do that. And I bought the photo albums with the, you know, the peel out pages and you stick them on there. So they're like magnetic. And so I was going to do that. So that was on my intentions and my to-do list. And I think a lot of people are like that where they have a to-do list. I know uh, Jilly Bean said, hey, Jilly Bean, how are you guys? Uh, reviewing, organizing and purging electronic photos is on my to-do list every year and it never gets done. My biggest issue is having duplications of the same thing over and over again. I hear it all the time. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, we're we're not alone here. I know this is this is true for all of us. Uh, I want to say hi to Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Good to see you. Hi, Fran. This is so exciting, you guys. Priscilla is here. You guys, this is just awesome. Uh, Patty's here. Patty already said hi to us, but hi, hi again, Patty. Uh, this is just fantastic. So I'm so glad that you guys have jumped in and joined us. Um, so start with me at the very beginning. I got this big to-do list of photos and let's start with the um, paper photos first. I've printed these out. I got boxes of photos. What's my next step? All right. So honestly, this might sound really obvious, but put them all in one place. They end up in bags and boxes and drawers and cabinets and under beds and in attics and in storage places and all different places. How can you organize something that's in a hundred directions? Mm. So honestly, getting them in one place that's secure, meaning um, it's it's not in the drop hall in the entryway where people are going to say, oh, what's that? And take some and walk off with it or where uh, in the middle of an of arts project <laughs> or in the middle of the kitchen where sticky food and flames and things are. But just actually securing a home base, so to speak. And I go into this in some of my online teaching because I actually teach people how to do this. But instead of teaching you how today, I think I'll just deliver the what to do. Uh, because sometimes you just need a professional to help speed you through and actually do some of the work for you. So please, um, I come to this with a spirit of compassion and a little bit of know how for you, uh, but there's no judgment. It's not everybody has the wherewithal, the patience or the time to actually do it all themselves. Mm -hmm. But getting them all physically in one location is your first best step. Then you know what Okay. I love bringing them all to one location. But what does that location need to look like? And I ask that because I know that there are humidity issues. There are light issues. There are issues of if I bring them to the wrong place, then it could maybe potentially damage or sticky my photos together. And then you try to peel them apart and then you rip half the photo apart like... What kind of place should I be storing them in if I'm going to collect them all into one location? So if they're, well, ideally you do want them in a place that's protected from um, humidity and light exposure and spills and natural disaster. But if you could first step, put them in one place where you can actually deal with them and work on them, a place where a human can fit instead of sticking them into a crawl space. Um, mm -hmm. Humidity is a biggie and light is another biggie to avoid. So even putting a cover on it or putting them in Rubbermaid bins with, um, do you know what damp rid is for any? Yes. Yes. To absorb moisture. Uh, those are really, really good things. If you can't deal with them right now, maybe put them in opaque, not see-through plastic bins for the temporary storage and put a bucket of damp rid in each one so that anything that's moisture is not going to become mold on your images. Then you can deal with them when you have time. So a temperature controlled storage space is fine, but don't put it there with the intention of one day I'll get to it because one day becomes, you know, never, you know. So there, unless you're working with somebody or you have some degree of accountability with family members where you schedule a day when you're going to tag team it and come back to it, you can actually make fun family weekends. Believe it or not, you can make a fun family weekend over it or a, or a best friend or a professional organizer and literally tag team it. But until you actually have a space to work on it, you're not going to. And I don't want you to be ready to work on it and not being able to put your hands on it. 
Um, so my question is, you mentioned a minute ago about the opaque containers and not the see-through containers. Yeah. That's something different than I've ever heard. Tell me more about that. Well, light. So I have these, let me show you something. I've got these wonderful containers. You find them in the craft stores, right? Yes. Thing. And while it's wonderful and handy to put a five by seven photo in or a couple stacks of three by fives, uh, that is going to let all the light through. And if all the light can get through, then it's going to continue to fade. So if you want me to give you a little science, <laughs> here goes. Uh, acid fades photos. Ultraviolet rays fade photos. So that's why when you hang beautiful artwork on the wall, you don't want to do it right where the sunbeams are going to land on your photo because it's going to fade. Same thing goes not just in frames, but in piles. So if you're storing things in clear containers, you're not protecting it from the light. You may protect it from fingers or spills, but the light is not going to work, not going to work in your favor. All right, uh, we had a question that just came in and thank you for explaining that because I think the more attention we pay to the light that gets in, I think that's gonna help preserve our photos for the long haul. And I love yes, that. Thank is. you so much for these tips. I know that uh, Patty just asked the question. She said, please explain the damp rid and where to get where to get some. Okay, um, I, go ahead. I, I, I just brought some up. It looks like this and damp it has lid. a little, it has a little see-through lid that is like this and there are little beads inside here and it's the i think the best way to explain it is there's like a leak bin where water leaks down as it absorbs water out of the air and so this is really great for uh gym lockers if there's a yes. lot of sweat and bad smell and nasty yes. stuff in there but it's also really great for the photos tell us about that and and give us your experience because i know this is the one that we use for closets there's probably yeah. a better version well, it just depends on your space. Um, that can work fine. I had to put one in my fire safe because I realized all oh, my documents were starting to mold. Oh, good point. Good point. You don't want to trap moisture in. We want we want it dark and we want it moisture free. So those are two of the things that you can do to make tangibles last longer and um, a healthier living environment for yourself to actually, because you don't want to make yourself sick going through and handling mold, mold and mold. Uh -huh. That not just ruins the memories, it ruins our health too. So the damp rid, I don't get any kickbacks on that. You get, there are other probably off brands, other brands, but think of it as like a little device that's non-electric to dehumidify. Mm -hmm. A dehumidifier that's without electricity needed. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know that uh, it, they come in little bags as well that you can hang up in closets. Hanger bags. Yep. And so we send those to kids for their lockers at school because a lot of kids play sports and stuff. And then their yes. locker always stinks yep. and is nasty, but yes. that will take out the smell as well as the moisture. So that's also yes. awesome. Yes, absolutely. And photos are no exception to that. Uh, film reels, video cassettes, slides, all of those things can collect mold and mildew with, you know, ongoing moisture that doesn't get remedied. So that is, that's a big thing. Um, another thing, if you don't mind me just kind of piggybacking on that. that no, tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm here to learn. So coming back to the topic of science, um, I told you about acid. Okay. So sometimes when you look in like the stores for album safe materials, photo safe is not a regulated term. Mm. Anybody can put photo safe on a product and it doesn't really mean anything. Oh, and word, yeah. good to know. Archival doesn't really mean anything. I mean, I'm sorry, if you own a brand, your audience, if you own a brand and you say it's archival, I'm trusting that you know what archival means. Okay, so it can't have acid and it can't have lignin, L-I-G-N-I-N. Lignin is what's in scotch tape and those magnetic albums and newsprint that turns yellow with age. So but that a lot means, of things that are archived, aren't don't they have lignin in them? Uh, unless you want to go individually test them, I'm just going to say that archival does not automatically mean. So you want to look for products that say acid-free and lignin-free if they're going to have contact oh. with your documents and your photos and things like that. So Interesting. Thanks for sharing that. 
And, and archival isn't specific enough for you to understand that those two main uh, enemies are void. Mm, yeah, I've saved a lot of stuff over the years and it turned yellow. And then by the time I needed it, or if I went to reference it later, it was like vanished. It's like a white yep. page. And I'm like, I yep. know there was something on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, how often have you seen somebody try to repair a photo with scotch tape? And and even if they taped from the back, it just, the yellow just sinks right through to the, fa to the base of the photo. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what's happening there. Well, Melanie says, I have uh, slides. I've got a huge collection in those little snap boxes. What advice would you give to Melanie? Would you tell her to, to put them inside uh, something with a cover on it or, or what until she gets to the opaque containers? Um, so uh, if, if her slide boxes or um, the reels that, 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 sorry, not the tip of the tongue syndrome, you know, that the slides, the tray that the slides uh -huh. are in for the projector. Sometimes they're stored in those. Um, usually they are opaque, but if for some reason light can get in them, she can take those, put them in a Rubbermaid bin or a plastic bin <laughs> to be Rubbermaid. That has, that has a dark a dark outside to it and yes, a dark and lid. It can come through and ideally it's dry. So that's a great thing. But my my wish for her and all others is that you actually scan them. Have those mm. slides scanned to digital because... Um, slides are very stable. They're very forgiving. They they age gracefully, unlike printed photos. It's a very stable media. So if they need to wait while you deal with your printed photos, that's a reasonable order of progression. Uh, but just don't just make sure that they're labeled. Anything you put in a box and put away, make sure it says on the outside, family slides or the name of your whatever it is, the occasion, or the organization, slides, or printed photos, or scan these, something mm -hmm. so that at a glance, it's it's a no-brainer and it speaks for itself. All right, I love that term, no-brainer. But for me, I, I consider myself pretty organized and I, I have systems and stuff in place. And yet when it comes to photos, I'm, I'm a hot mess. <laughs> and so what well, let's pretend, let's just pretend for a second that I've gathered all my photos and they're all in one place. What's the next step? Um, the next step would be um, a, a command center. And this is what I teach. I like when you're ready to actually work with them, set up a space where you can, whether it's temporarily or something that you have to set up and tear down, um, a place where you can actually work and that mm -hmm. needs to have good light and drinks away, drinks and food away. Um, and you're actually going to want, um, I like to use sort boxes and I can show you my, a picture of my favorite one. If you'd like, I'll pick it up, but it's an opaque, uh, sort box and I like to have multiples of them. And I literally, it's just like eating a meal. It's one bite at a time. Sometimes something needs to be cut first, right? But literally taking a handful of photos in your hand and putting them in categories according to subject. Um, I, you just get, you got to start somewhere. And if you have somebody doing with you, you've got the added advantage of accountability and company to do it, even if they're not even doing what you're doing, but they're holding you accountable of being there, but just it's one bite at a time. It's just like somebody training for a marathon. Although I think this is a much easier task than training for a marathon. Sorry to all the runners out there who huh, I'm not, but uh, just one piece at a time. And one of my favorite things about having a smartphone is it's my timer when I need it to be. And I can set the timer for 25 minutes and I'm just putting things in piles. The key is to put things away once, not multiple times. So putting them in categories and labeling the categories as you go. Um, and then when the timer goes off, you're either done for the day or you take a stretch break and come back for another round. Um, but literally one bite at a time is what gets you from overwhelming what looks like a hoarding mess to the at the finish line. You just have to keep coming back. Well, I appreciate your analogy because uh, as a 29 time marathon runner, I can tell you that uh, running marathons is a lot of work and it's a lot of practice. And uh, if I can do a marathon, maybe then I can actually <laughs> do my Oh photos. gosh, this is easy <laughs> compared to that. I ran my first 5K last year and it, oh, yay. it was tough. 
it was tough because I only ran to play sports. I didn't run for the sake of running and I wanted uh -huh. to see if I could do it and I did it. Yay, <laughs> that's so exciting. I love it. But I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I think that's what I like best about marathon running is there's a lot of thinking time. And so as you're running, I find myself going, man, you're crazy. Why are you doing this? And then the other part of me is like, I got up at four in the morning and I, I ran in the rain. I'm ready for this, you know? Yeah. So I, I think sometimes we need that same boost to boost yeah. us to go through these projects like sorting photos, yeah. because yeah. what I just heard you say was sort into categories. Yeah. And in my head, I can forecast and think, oh, no. I'm going to spend an hour sorting through my photos and then I'm going to have 35 little piles of different events in my life. So if I have 35 piles, how do I move my 35 piles? Like, Oh, now I, my hour is up. I don't have any more time. I've got 35 individual piles. How do I manage that so that the dog doesn't go kicking them into another pile or I spill my stuff or okay. somebody spills water or food on it, or then what happens? Cause in my head, I can just see, Oh no, if I'm going to get 35 piles, I'm going to be, make trouble for myself. Right. So when I say put things away once, I mean, don't put it away where the dog's going to knock over the pile. Okay. I mean, put it in something that is an opaque container. I'm going to show you not too much detail because this is an actual project to for a client. I'll show it back to you backwards. This is oh, one wow. of my sort boxes. Um, I sell them. I love them. Um, these it's plastic. Uh, so moisture stays out. Uh, each one of these sections holds 200 five by seven photos, or you can double stack them. And I put things away once. So if you find yourself, uh, not knowing how to organize, um, I, I teach all this in my courses, um, and with my clients, start by subjects. What are subjects that keep reoccurring? Start with what's in your hand. When you grab that first chunk, uh, if it's a family reunion, please don't worry about which family to put it under. Call it reunion. Mm. And if you have two sides of the family or four sides of the family, you can call it Smith reunion or whatever your last name is, reunion or whatever... Um, Pennsylvania reunion or Canada reunion or just whatever your brain identifies with as a reasonable subject. And don't worry if it's a reoccurring theme, you can actually add later reunions to the same category. And eventually that will help you refine them again because usually the human brain doesn't always remember all of the dates correctly. I've had many arguments, well, discussions settled by going to an album that was dated. But when we don't have the, <laughs> the you know, luxury of having something like that, like a scrapbook to settle a discussion, um, it's just easier to find a memory when it's under topic. That's a great solution because I know that for my family, I'm from a really large family, we have a lot of reunions. And so for me, the Brown reunion in my head, was that 2016? Was that 2015? Was that 2019? Like when yeah. was that? And yeah. I'm only smart enough to guess by like how old the people in the pictures appear. Right. <laughs> Pre-2015, you know what I mean? Yes. So somewhere between 2009 and 2012. Right. You know, and I'm, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I would I would appreciate having them all in Brown Reunion because yeah. then I know at least all those cousins belong in this bin. Because when you see pictures of little tiny kids, no offense or anything, but unless they look just like their parents, it's hard to know whose kid is that and what side of the family do they belong on. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And um, uh, you know you're talking about funerals and weddings. You've had a lot of those recently. I've I've had two, and I'm looking at a third. And um, mm. Those are the times when photos just become such um, a center stage type of thing. You know, why do we take photos in the first place? Well, that's that emotional need to remember. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean I won't live a happy, fulfilling life and my children won't feel loved and my aunts won't feel loved if I get the dates wrong. That's not what it's about. You know, it's about the stories and we have the right to edit our stories and get rid of the scraped up knee pictures if they really don't lift us up, mm -hmm. you know? Um, 
Well, and let's let's talk about that for a second. Let's yeah. say that I have some photos because my mother, uh, no offense to my mother, love her. She's a dear woman, but she just takes like, oh, I got a camera in my hand, snap. And it's not centered or whatever. And it'll be like half of someone's leg. We don't yes. know whose leg it is. It's just a right. leg. Right. And then back in the olden days when we paid for the pictures, we're like, man, we paid for this picture. We should keep this picture of someone's leg. Again, we don't know whose leg it is. <laughs> but mm -hmm. now we're starting to throw that away. Suppose mm -hmm. there's kind of a good photo and we kind of know the person's face, even if it's not a great photo. How do you give yourself permission to let go of those, all oh, that kind of crappy photos? I got a question for you. All right. And so this is what you do when you're having a hard time letting go. If I throw away the picture of this leg, am I throwing a family member away? And I, I hope that doesn't sound callous. It's not throwing a person away. It's removing the extra so that you can enjoy the good ones. Now, mm -hmm. if we're talking about my mother-in-law, who never really got to be my mother-in-law, she passed when my husband was four. Right. I'm so sorry. Um, I have, I have enough pictures I can count on one hand of her. One of them is really awful, but it's part of a story, mm -hmm. and because it's not visually ideal, doesn't mean I'm going to let it go. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's really special because it is one of the few. Then there's pictures of my kids who I love practically more than. Well, me, but I throw away pictures of them all the time because I'm keeping the ones that make them feel loved when they see it and make me feel loved when I look at it. Mm -hmm. So honoring the story and the legacy is really the filter I'm trying to describe. When we throw away pictures of somebody, it doesn't mean we're throwing them away. It means we're making space to enjoy how they would want to be remembered. Mm, that's good. That's really good. And I, I'm glad you brought that up because I have a picture right now of my dad and my dad is wearing a suit. And I saw, like I said, I can count on, on one hand the times I've seen my dad in a suit. He's yeah. a gardener. And so yeah. he was very self-sufficient, always working out in the garden. And he always had like a headband on and he wasn't yeah. dressed up in, in funeral clothing. And right. But I've got this amazing picture of him in a suit. Yeah. And he says, you know, that's not my favorite picture. And I'm like, I have so very few pictures where you're actually looking at the camera and you're smiling that this picture means something to me. Yes. But he said that how I want to be remembered is me in my garden, because that's yeah. who I am and how I identify as as being this this man of the earth, not a man in a very stiff business suit, you know. Yes. And so I I struggle with those because I'm going to keep them both. You know, because yeah. to me, that's that's the essence of, you know, the, the broad spectrum of my dad. Right. right. But but at the same time, I do struggle with the do I throw the picture of the leg away or the picture of the beautiful tree or whatever it is my mother took. My mother loves to take pictures. And if you yeah. ever go on a trip with her, oh, my goodness, she's going to take a picture of everything. Someone yeah. else's dog, someone yeah. else's, you know, whatever. And it has nothing to do with us. And then I look yeah. at the picture. I'm like, why did we end up with these pictures? You know? Right. And so I struggle with that because I want to honor my mom, but at the same time, her pictures are like, who are the, who is in these right. pictures? <laughs> right. I'm glad you brought this up. So I have something I want to offer. Sometimes when we take pictures, it's, it is only for ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not for other people. Like I know on my social media stories, I post pictures of nature all the time. I love to garden. And I'm inspired by nature. And I love when I see the morning dew and the light coming through it. So it's an in the moment enjoyment for myself. But do I expect my family to love those pictures? No, because they could probably find that on Google Images. So mm -hmm. it's not necessarily part of their joy. It's just my joy in the moment. And I'm just trying to sped, spread more beauty that I'm observing in the world. So um, I think you can have the best of both worlds. Your mom can save all of her beautiful garden photos and you might want to save a few select for you, but let her enjoy her nature photos and all that. But then from a legacy perspective, you hold on to the ones of nature that have her in them that make you feel good. So it's not a one size fits all scenario. Mm -hmm. it, photos never are, or otherwise all of our photos would look the same. Yeah, that's true. 
Well, when it comes to photos, okay, again, I'm from a large family and yeah. my brother just set up this shared Google Drive or something. Yep. And he said, yep. upload your pictures to Google, like just send them right from your phone to Google. Right. And then I was like, no, because then I don't have a chance to edit, you know, the whites of people's eyes or whatever. So we look tired when we had this reunion and we stayed up all night chitty chatting. Right. So I, I don't want to send those photos. And he said, and it was kind of an interesting thought. But he said, go ahead and upload them all. And if that picture means something to someone in the family and they want to download it and repurpose it, they can do their own editing at that time. But he said, I'd rather have your photos, crappy as they are, than no photos at all. And that's kind of where we are right now is because I haven't uploaded them because I'm scared that I haven't had the time to edit them and make them look pretty. Do I just upload them? Like, give me permission to just upload them and, and tell me, like, why I'm having such a hang up over that. All right. I'm going to let you just take a nice deep breath. It's going to feel good. <sighs> okay. I'm ready. Yeah. Upload them. If they don't want them, they don't have to take them. But then you don't have the burden of, I have to remember to edit those. I have to remember to edit those. I feel guilty. You're going to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning. I didn't upload the photos because I didn't edit them. I feel bad. And then something happens and somebody needed that photo and you couldn't find it. So there's no harm in uploading it. And, and then if you want to edit them and upload them and make a comment, these are the ones I like even more after the fact. If you get to it, then win-win. I would love to have a conversation with your brother because I would clap for him in person and say, well done. <laughs> um, not because I want to teach excess, but when you're, you, I'm a, I'm a fan of Google. Okay. When you're using Google photos, for example, I love them because they don't care if you're Apple or PC and other things. It's just, it's more universal in my experience. Um, you get to decide how you want to share your pictures. And sometimes when you share something that you don't necessarily want to keep, then you're letting somebody else have it and giving yourself freedom to purge without guilt. Purge so we have a question from Patty, and this is interesting. Patty G says, can you upload your photos to Google for free? I don't okay, know a lot about Google Photos. How, tell, tell me about that and how that works. Great question, Patty. Yes, Patty, thank you for asking that for everybody. Um, the long and the short of it is yes and no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It wasn't fair. What I mean by yes and no is like many uh, cloud services, you can subscribe to an unlimited amount and yes, upload everything. You can also have a free account and, uh, and choose the storage saver in your settings so that it uploads a large version of your file versus the full size of your file, which is totally printable, totally good enough quality to share. Um, and and because uh, they give you an allotment of storage space for free. And then you do need to pay for um, cloud storage. And quite honestly, I trust a paid cloud storage more than I do a free scenario because then you have a contractual, they have a contractual obligation to you to keep that updated. And something like that is just, it's it's good for all. And for what it costs to get a cup of coffee at your local coffee shop once or twice a month, it's totally worth the protection and convenience and the in the moment sharing you can have when you're out to dinner or at that family reunion and you want to see something that's not in your camera roll and you open up the app and you can in a moment type type beach and or June 2023 and get up the get you know, bring up these memories and share them in the moment and just have the joy of reminiscing, which is why we want to save these in the first place. Well, you brought up an interesting question. You're at a family party and you want to pull something up. How do you search for it? Does it automatically pull in information or do you have to type it in or because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't mind hitting the auto upload. But then what happens? Because I don't I'm going to have to sit down and like tag every photo and give it a name and yeah. give it a face and all that stuff. How does that work? Because again, in my head, it's like this overwhelming task that when on earth am I ever going to find the time to do that? Okay. I'm going to help the non-techies feel like a tech expert right now. That's me. Yay. Repeat after me. Artificial intelligence is good. 
artificial intelligence is fantastic. Yay! I just discovered it and I'm, I'm in love. Yes. You win. You win. Okay. I know I'm a little geeky, but I'm geeking out on you because what AI does for you is it allows you to keyword search sunglasses or look at things because it's going to show you by default the most recently uploaded items. Um, and so just opening up the app, you're probably going to see your most recent images and videos first, and then you can ah. scroll through if you want. But when you go to any cloud service worth anything, you look for the magnifying glass or a box that says search, and you type in a keyword like dog or fireworks or wine <laughs> or Whatever it is, mop, <laughs> that's for your house cleaning something. Um, you can bring it up and it'll show you what it's identifying as artificial intelligence. So there are defaults. Um, things are organized by date, the metadata. So if I scanned a photo from 1954 when my grandparents were dating, but I scanned it in 2022, AI is going to think that photo was taken in 2022. So that's something just to keep in mind. You can always change that when you're having uh, your images scanned or you're doing that yourself. You can manually override that. You can override that in Google Photos, for example, and others. Um, but just keep in mind when that image was born is going to be the default timeline. When you could I that. could I scan photos from let's say my mother's wedding way back when? and then go in and highlight somehow that entire wedding album once I'd uploaded it to Google and then say this happened in 1943 or whatever the year was so that it it then shows that date instead of 2023, which makes her much younger than me. That is one way to do it without having to individually identify each metadata by putting them in an album that is named the date of the wedding. That is one, one way of giving them that information. Yes. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so I, I it's okay to go ahead and upload upload my videos or my my images to Google Image. Is it Google Images or Google Photos? Photos. Google, Google Images Photos. is just like Google. I got a Google Directions. If you go to Google Images, they're just free stock photos where the internet just grabs things from everywhere I can find it online. Now, um, is it going to share my family photos on Google to the public? only if you're uploading them to public places. So you'll find things from your YouTube channel on Google Images. You'll find things from your public facing uh, places. But if you have an email and a password login to Google Photos, those are private. Those are private spaces. So, so I don't have to share everything unless I intentionally tried to share it on social media. But if I shared it on social media, it's out there in the public because that's yes. a public face. Yes. But if yes. I kept it as my private photo album of my grandmother or something, that it's then not going to be exposed. Then you control who has access. Yes. I love that. Yes. That's so cool. Okay. So how do I get my paper images, my paper photos to Google Drive? Um, is, is that the end goal? Is that the photo. Google photo? Go Google um, Photos. You can put photos, by the way, some people get confused. You can put photos in Google Drive. It just doesn't give you all the search and organization features that you want for your photo collections. Okay. Oh, it's different. Yes. Okay. So tell me more. Tell me about that. Because right now I have Google Drive and I think that's where my images are stored. You And there's nothing wrong with that. But having everything upload there, you're just going to go back to the old... Um, PC days where you have to select, 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 and organize in tangible folders. And you you're telling me it's easier than that. So Google Photos is like light years easier than those days. Okay, I'm I'm completely open minded. Um, I I am new to this. Other than my brother's, like you got to do this, you got to do this, and I'm like, okay, one day I'll learn. I guess today is that day I'm learning. Yay! I'm going to call him up when we're done and say, Josh, great suggestion. Chris Ladon said it was a great suggestion as well. Yeah, I gave a clap for you. <laughs> I, I applauded him. Tell him. I, I want to join his Facebook group too. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Okay. So tell me um, what happens. I've, let's, let's imagine for a minute that I've hired you and we've sorted through all the different 
uh, holidays and family reunions and birthdays and Christmas and all the things. And I now have all the digital photos um, in a dark, opaque container set aside from moisture and all the things. Yes. Now, how do I get those to Google Photos? They need to be scanned. You do need to have them scanned. That's the only way you need to get them into a digital file, JPEGs preferably, so that they can be uploaded. Uploaded means to give. Download means take. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so they do need to be scanned, whether you do it yourself or you use a service, they need to be scanned in order for you to have digital files to then include in your Google Photos account and shared albums. All right. We, uh, we have a question that says, what about storing photos on the photo thumb drives? This oh, is also from Patty G. You. Great questions, Patty thank G. You. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. For those who don't, USB drive, thumb drive, flash drive, it's these little guys, okay? That's just so that we're all talking about the same little device or, or something that's bigger that's an external hard drive. Think of the thumb drives. Okay, yes, external hard drive. That's what I'm, I'm pointing at there. I love those for backups. The thumb drives, I love these. Would you please indulge me with a metaphor? Think of them as street side parking for your car. Street side parking is great for temporary, but folks who live in cities where they don't actually have a driveway and they rely on street side parking, what do they have to do? They can't park there unlimited forever and park it there for three months because street side parking is meant to be rotated. The reason I treat these USB drives as street side parking is because they are a way of getting photos from point A to point B, digital point A to digital point B. So, um, and I love backups. So I don't consider this a backup unless you want to put it in like a fire safe in addition to the ones, the copies that you're actually using in your computer, in your cloud. But these really are one, this is a convenience that I use to deliver photos I scan for my customers, my clients, so that they have an online delivery and a tangible delivery. This is my version of a tangible copy that's temporary. Uh, the reason oh. is they can be corrupted. They can be erased. They can be dropped in your coffee cup <laughs> and or fall out of your bag into the you know, street and get rolled over. These mm -hmm. things are not indestructible. They're less stable than the external hard drive, the little storage device you just showed me, but those can fall down the stairs too, mm -hmm. or get sat on by an elephant. So well, the thing I like about this, and we, we've got all of our YouTube shows and all of our podcasts yeah. and everything inside these, I think these are like five terabytes or something. Yeah. And the reason that I like those is because they do fit inside a shoebox. And in the event that I don't want to sound dismal or anything, but in the event that there was a fire, yes. I would be in the same situation you were in where I would be like, oh my goodness, all my intellectual property and everything that I've worked for my entire life is going to be gone if I don't run and grab that little yeah. collection and get out of my house. And I hate so, to say that, but I think that's the box I would grab. I would grab the box with the photos and the, the videos sure. and all the stuff that I've sure. created Absolutely. on my way out the door, leave everything else, let it burn. But I can't recreate all the stuff I had in the past. You and so exactly to me, this right. is an incredibly important conversation that we're having today. Yes. My question to you, and you just brought something up in a very casual sort of way. You said, uh, this is the digital file that I deliver my deliverables to my clients. So suppose, for example, and I want to hear more about this, suppose that somebody hires you to do this. Now, mm -hmm. my question is, if they don't know you, like you're not the next door neighbor, you're not a relative or whatever, how do I feel comfortable and safe sending you my photos if I only have one copy and these were moms or grandmas and there's only one copy? How do I feel safe about sending these to you in hopes that I'm going to see them again or I don't know? Maybe I'm not going to see them again. Maybe you're going to take them from me and just give me back a digital copy, which I guess is the end result. But how does that work? And how do I overcome the fear of I'm letting go of one of these things I've held on to so that I can preserve it? Okay. And you get my, really you get my good, question. Really good, good question. And I want to give you two different answers. One is for the head and one's for the heart. Okay. 
first of all, I think our heart figures things out before our brain even really processes it. So when you get that gut feeling that something's not right, it's not right. You need to listen to that. But allow your head to gather information. And um, the reason why I've been in this industry as long as I have is because trust is first and foremost, the most important thing. So what I deliver to my clients is what I do for me and my loved ones. And no, I don't want a total stranger to ship me a bunch of photos without us having an actual human exchange. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, I need to know what's important to you. I need to know what is your end game. Are you doing this for an anniversary? Is there a timeline? Um, there's information that as we get to know each other, trust, is it just happens because I treat you the way I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is why you can you can go on social media and you can check out my accounts and talk to the people who comment on my work and ask them what they know about me. You can do that. Um, but actually, I already did. That's why you're on this show today, because you you passed all the all the expectations with flying colors. So hello and welcome. Just because, yeah, I did. And I, I it's, it's a question I get asked a lot. And it's a question yeah. like, how do I hand over my my photos? Right. I've only got one copy right. given to somebody that I don't know, sure. and they're going to scan them for me. And I'm, right. I'm afraid. I get that question sure. a lot. Whether you use me or not, here are things to look for for a service, okay? Uh, how responsive is, is there an actual human being you, you can talk to? Uh, do these items have to go overseas? Do I get my originals back? Because there are services that are so cheap, it's because they're getting shipped overseas and you don't get your originals back, okay? So sometimes the cheaper thing might fit the budget more easily, but perhaps it's more worthwhile to start with a section of it and try the service. So you, in your mind, I can't lose everything if I don't give them everything. You know what I mean? This mm -hmm. is the... The psychology you have to some people are okay just cannonball let me let me have it whatever the temperature is and some people need one toe to okay one foot before i let the other foot in mm -hmm. and that's okay um but but listen to your heart if your heart's saying something's not right then maybe your head needs to step in and gather more information or else you just need to look for some other options um uh, patty asked another great question um and Somebody asked for my happy bell. I don't know if you saw this or not, but I have a little happy bell. We have them. We use them in place of sugar treats. So happy bell for all the great questions that you guys have been asking today. Oh Thank gosh, you so much. Yes. Ding, um, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I know. Um, and Patty says, are there any types of portable scanners where you can stack a bunch of photos to scan instead of scanning them one at a time? The scanning yeah. services are costly. And that yes. is a great question. Tell me how they that are. works. Um, okay. There's, there's so much in that series of questions. That's there's many layers to that. The surface answer is yes. You can go you can search um, scanners that actually self-feed. Um, can sit look at reviews, so you look at product reviews, literally Google search in whatever search engine, but I use Google for everything. Um, what is the best scanner to scan a stack of photos to my whatever your device is. Okay. Because not all apples are the same flavor. <laughs> so yes, you can actually have scanners for that. Not all photos are going to fit inside of those scanners. Some of them mm -hmm. are going to need a larger, like a glass surface. I have four different scanning methods I use. So when I get a box from people, I don't always know if they can feed them through that scanner or if I'm using any of my various devices. So that's the benefit. So you of use you use different ones based on what the photograph needs? Yes. Yes. Okay. How delicate it is, if it's curled, if it's nice and pristine and a four by six, I do have some that I self feed, but then, you know, also you have to look at what are the features and look at the reviews. Uh -huh. So you really have to do the research. There's no one size fits all again. So tell me a little bit about your service. Let's say somebody was going to hire you because they they are like me and they're like, oh, I just know that I'm never going to get around to it, but I have great intentions. 
what is the next step? Because I, I'm guessing ultimately we want to take our box photos and we want to put those in the cloud so that they are searchable. I know for me, that would be the answer because okay. Okay. if I'm going to use my photos, it's because I'm going to share them with family and friends or, you know, when there's a funeral or something and they like to pull all the family photos together, or if there's a wedding or a celebration, again, it's right. a family video. And I'm right. doing a lot of video myself right now. So if I was ever going to try to illustrate something, I got to have the photo digitized somehow anyway. Sure. So I'm guessing that's the end goal. How does someone go from the box of photos to the cloud, Google photos? Okay. So that is one of the things we can do. But honestly, the first most important thing is just to have a conversation. Um, okay. Uh, reaching me through my website is totally doable. You can even request um, a, a complimentary consultation. I do. I have. I have high touch client services, even if we are, and I only work with um, the U.S. Uh, for my overseas people, they're welcome to partake in my online course. That's the mm -hmm. only way I can really serve overseas. Uh, but I work in the in the U.S. And uh, so whether you're using my service or not, ask yourself, what is my goal here? Because um, to me, putting things in Google Photos is not the goal. It's one of the things you do, like training. That's not actually crossing the marathon finish line for me. Mm. Um, and some people are still afraid of using cloud services because they don't see it. They think out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, that just means they need a little bit more familiarity and, and empowerment. So I apologize. I'm not trying to avoid the question, but until I have a conversation with each individual client, I don't know what their ideal outcome is. For some people, it is I have shelves and boxes, but I just want maybe the greatest hits in three or four volumes of albums in my hand mm. and, and everything else in Google Photos. You know, so downsizing is also a big part of what I do um, that maybe some people think it's hoarding, but I think it's just like an extensive collection <laughs> of memories. And it doesn't mean that you were irresponsible or excessive. It just means that we need to get you to the finished goal that suits you and your loved ones. Because I love that answer because I, I was thinking only of myself. But when I think of my parents, for example, ne neither of my parents are really good at even getting on the computer. And every time they try, they have to call me and say, now, how do I turn it on? <laughs> yes. And so to them yeah. having an album that's on their coffee table that they could actually look through would yes. be more meaningful to them. Yes. Whereas the digital photo might be more meaningful to me. And I still have boxes of photos and CDs and DVDs of photos and all that stuff. And yeah. there's a younger generation, even from me, that never ever even had a printed photo all of their right. photos are digital so like yeah. you said and i'm glad you brought it up that we're all in different places and we all have yeah. different needs and i love the fact that you're willing to evaluate each of our needs individually rather than just say oh one size fits all kind of a thing no it's just it, the, why would we expect our neighbors to live exactly like we do you know we can we can be so different and appreciate those differences um, mm -hmm. So it's very, very common for there to be generational differences and things are going to come full circle because mm -hmm. there are young people who want that photo in their cell phone on their wall. They well, want, I, yeah, Go I'm, ahead. I'm glad you brought that up because I have a much younger niece and she got so excited the other day because she found this thing on Facebook where you can pick your favorite photos and then have them printed. And she's like, did you, did you know they can print photos? Right. And she was so that. excited. Like it was the first thing that she'd ever discovered. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we know something they didn't. <laughs> we used to do that. That used to be the only way, you know. Oh, Patty's got another question. She says, are you going to tell us to throw away the original photos after we scan and store? That's the okay. most difficult part for me. Or are the stored copies backups to the hard copies? Oh. That is a great question. And for it's that, happy another happy bell. Happy, happy bell. bell. That's yes. it. Right. Yes. Yes. I would give that a double. All uh, right. Two happy bells. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. <laughs> so listen, um, Patty, right? Patty G. I, I uh -huh. took the glasses. Uh, you can digitally back up printed photos, but you can also have tangible backups to your digital photos, okay? Not everything has to be in both places, but 
when you get things protected, there's nothing wrong with purging the excess and keeping the highlights tangibly. That is sometimes very necessary when people need to downsize, for example. Um, or think about the generation who might be inheriting. What's a manageable way to pass down tangibles that are special to the family story or to the genealogy or to the organization? So that can be your filter. And everybody has degrees of readiness. Sometimes when there's grief involved, like they lost somebody, that every single photo of that loved one or that beloved pet um, is still, they're not finished with the processing of emotions. Um, and so compassion is really, really important. And it's okay to tell yourself, I'm not ready to let these go yet. But when I am ready, I don't have to let all of them go. I, I will be able to, in time, choose the best of. Um, and if you want to be ready now and you're not, that's when it's really important to have a professional. Well, one of the things that I'm running into right now, and I'll be truthful with you, I'm looking at my life, which is super busy. And then, uh, again, my parents have pictures that are important to them and their parents have passed on and we've got pictures from them and three, four, five, six generations of photos from whenever photos became popular. And so I want it to stop with me. I don't want to pass on you know, billions of photos to the next generation. I want to, I want to go ahead and do something where I figure out a way to either preserve the photos, either make scrapbooks or albums or digital photos, or do the, now I just learned Google photos, do the Google photos or something so that the buck stops here. And I don't just keep passing these responsibilities onto the next generation because yes. it, it seems like it's, it, it would be much more enjoyed if everything was organized and everything yes. was in a specific place rather than say, oh, I know grandma's wedding is inside a box somewhere in the other room. Correct. You know what I mean? The rest yes. of the family can't enjoy that if I'm the only one with that copy. And yes. I don't know why my family thought I would be the responsible one to handle everyone's photos. <laughs> but I do. I've got mm. I've got photos that belong to everyone else in the family. Let's get those organized now. So you received a job family historian when you became in possession of all of these generations of memories. Yeah. Do you know how often I hear that, Angela? I, I wish I had a tally. <laughs> I could fill an entire wall with the number of times I hear that. Um, I think what your I think your intentions are really good and your question is rooted in a very heartfelt place where we want to pass on legacies of love, not responsibilities and obligations. Uh -huh. So um, that intention is fantastic. And how we get you from where you are to where you want to be um, one step at a time, just like you're running training, um, having that end game in mind or just being open to what that end game could look like and using digital as a means to get to an end uh, as a tool. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question because it was pretty broad. Did you want me to go into that a little bit more? No, I'm just I'm just paying attention to the fact, and I think I think a lot of us struggle with this, where we want to honor our family and honor the family memories. Yes. And there might be a lot of photos. Yeah. If we don't take the responsibility to do something about it today, we do then just pass that on to the next generation, yes. which yes. is why I'm in this situation now. And I've right. got five, six, seven generations of photos right here uh, on this property. Right. right. Like you said, heaven forbid, there should be something like a fire or a flood yeah. or a hurricane or something yeah, that would compromise that. And then suddenly I don't want to be the only one in the family that has all these photos. And I was responsible for everyone's memories. And then I screwed up somehow. <laughs> right. Well, that's where your brother coming back to his suggestion, dump them all there. If you don't want them, you don't have to take them, but it might be special to somebody else. That's where digital is really, uh, it's a meeting place. And um, half of what I do is not just for people, but also instructing people on how to be empowered to find them again. So there's nothing wrong with scanning everything and purging them digitally because it actually is easier than it seems. If you don't know how to do that, that's where a professional is really handy, even if it's just to get you started and to set you off and set and set check-ins. I have clients who 
do the sorting with my check-ins and accountability, and then they give me the scanning as they're going in batches. I've, mm -hmm. I've done subscription services where they just do a chunk a month. And in the course of a year, they literally cleaned it all out. And then we're in a place to say, I want a greatest hits album. That's awesome. Oh gosh, I've loved this conversation. This has been super helpful. And I know that some of our folks, Jilly Beans leaving. See you guys. It's super to uh glad I'm super glad to have you guys here. And I'm sorry that our time is up. But uh Chris, do tell us where our listeners and viewers can go to find you and how we can hire you if we're ready for uh, that conversation that you mentioned. I appreciate that so much. Um, I can put that in the link in the comments. Um, but chrisladon.com is my website and there is a contact form there, and it's Chris with a K, K R I S L E D O N N E dot com. And I'm also on social media. It's Chris Reminis, and I'm Chris with a K. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I will leave links in the replay and the show notes so that our, our listeners and our viewers can find you. Um, one last parting advice that you would give to our friends before we say goodbye for today. How about a travel tip for photos? Okay, perfect. All right, because this is the most common cam camera, right? Uh -huh. um, the end of every day on a vacation, sit through there and see what pictures of your palm or your shoe you can delete before it backs up to the cloud. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was very informative. And I just, I really enjoyed this. We're going to have to have you back. Thank you so much. Oh, Angela, thank you for sharing your space. Happy reminiscing. You thank you. Thank you guys for joining us. And we'll see you again, same time, same place next week. Take care and have a great week.